Good day. How are you? I hope you're doing fine. So, we're going to tackle the last topic for this subject, Ed 304, the teaching in the community, school culture, and organizational leadership. But this time, before we will have first our activity, it's a jumbled letters. With the instruction here, look, arrange me. So, I will just give you three or five seconds to think what are these words. So, the first one, what is it? Alright, correct. It's instructional. The second one, okay, let's see. It's leadership. The, thir the third one, we have, let's check. Okay, it's school-based management. The fourth one, what is it? What do you think it is? Okay, it's Brigada Escuela, correct? And the last one? Oh, it's School Improvement Plan. Right, so all of those words are connected to our topic this day. So, our topic is about instructional leadership. Under this topic, we have school-based management, school-based management or SBM, school improvement plan or SIP, and working with school stakeholders, Brigada Escuela. So the topic that I will going to discuss today are the first two and the rest will be discussed with my co-reporter. Hi, I'm Anami Romano and my topic is about instructional leadership and school-based management or the SBM. So first, let's tackle what is instructional leadership. So instructional leadership is leadership that supports the development of teaching and learning. It is referred to using different names including pedagogical leadership, learning-centered leadership, leadership for learning, and student-centered leadership. So, this represents the specific and focused practices in which school-engaged leaders that intentionally support the development of effective teaching and learning in the schools. So, leadership is complex work and can have a range of purposes. For example, some leadership tasks may be primarily managerial and not directed towards improving learning and teaching. The motivation for instructional leadership is the improvement of instruction, specifically uh, the school head, for example, who manages the school improvement from the teaching and learning process from its instructions. So, for decades, researchers have sought to understand what instructional leadership is. And there is consensus that it includes, first, a strong focus in, on learning. In essence, focus enables us to begin a task and maintain our focus and effort until it is finished. Concentration is crucial for many academic and divorce to identify important ideas and completely absorb the components of a lesson. Students must be able to employ focus when reading and listening. Focus on what is the best for the student's progress in learning. That is the goal of the instructional leadership. First one. So let's move on to the second one. Developing teaching and learning objectives. So, learning objectives should highlight the most important topics and sessions should be organized to accomplish these goals. The audience desired behavior, the circumstances under which the conduct is expected, and the level of proficiency expected should be able to include the learning objectives, which should be SMART. Which means smart from the S, specific, M, measurable, A, achievable, R, relevant, and T, 
is a time bound. It is a good way to plan the steps to meet the long-term goals in teaching. So, third is holding high expectations of students. So, high expectations means having an attitude that you expect students to do their personal best at all times. So, you have to put expectations to your students so that your student will work hard for their best, that you that they can meet your expectations. So, next is creating and supporting student learning goals. So, giving students a way to think and talk about what they have learned, you will supporting them and making it easier for them to know what they know and give them a language to communicate what they know to others. Such awareness is considered central to learning that lasts. Next is monitoring learner progress. So, progress monitoring can provide teachers awareness on what are the students needed that can help them learn more and learn faster as well as teach them skillfully and assess on to decide what kind of education will be most beneficial for your learners okay so next is protecting instructional time so school leadership ensures that instructional time is protected and allocated to focus on curricular and instructional materials that are essential since they help the teacher and learners avoid overemphasis on recitations. Resource materials give students the opportunity to engage in hands-on learning that aids in the development of concepts and skills as well as a variety of learning styles. Next is coordinating curriculum. So, effective teaching is supported by a comprehensive curriculum which addresses the needs of professional learning. A coherent curriculum will increase the efficiency, availability, and equity of service available to all students who request support in order to meet quality, fairness, and effectiveness objectives. So, that is how we coordinate with our curriculum. So next we have is providing instructional support. So when instructional support is a supportive goal-oriented program that employs certain evaluation and intervention approaches to help all students in the normal classroom overcome academic or behavioral obstacles. That's the best instructional leader should do to provide support in the means of instructions. And last we have is supporting teacher learning. So, teachers need to li listen and engage with learners. Learners' voices that is expressed in the classroom and in their work to support learning and enable learners to develop their own understanding because this process helps to develop independent learners who begin to model the teacher's approach. Because this will let your students learn in their own and that makes the teacher's work easier. Instructional leadership can be conceptualized as leadership practice that supports effective teaching and learning and provides guidance and direction for instructional improvement. So there's this international research meta-analysis reveal that instructional leadership has a positive influence on student achievement. Understanding how instructional leadership impacts in student achievement is the key challenge because leadership typically has an indirect effect on student achievement. Student learning mainly happens in classrooms 
where teachers have the biggest the biggest effect on their learning but leadership has the second large effect principal instructional leadership impacts on student achievement through strategies that that affect what happens in the classroom so as we all know that the principals will the one who manage the schools and they also have to set strategies they also have to give techniques they also have to know what happens in the classroom with our teachers all right so next we will tackle is why is instructional leadership important so instructional leadership is the most effective type of leadership practice for improving student learning outcomes a summary of international research on educational leadership agrees that educational leadership has the strongest impact on student learning so this instructional leadership has a strong impact on the learning of the students many large international studies show that senior leaders or they are the principals they are responsible for a significant portion of the variability in student performance like for an instance principals they are the ones who guide for settings and strategies for better learning instructional leadership is the most effective in improving student achievement across different school settings and levels to so to simply put the intra instructional leadership practices of leaders and teachers in schools increases students achievement by improving teaching and learning in the school unpacking the layers of what this means reveals other important findings so for example the presence of instructional leadership in a school first the presence of instructional leadership in the school is correlated with higher teacher efficacy. So, teachers believe in their ability to effectively handle the tasks, obligations, and challenges related to their professional activity. Teachers, they place a key role in influence, influencing important academic outcomes for example the student's achievement the student's motivation and teachers also will have to do with the well-being in the working environment they have to address what what is happening in the classroom so that they will know they will ask for themselves am i an effective teacher then they will reflect on it then that's the case that they will have to believe their ability what they have teaching to their students all right so next we have is contributes to creating a strong learning culture so a good learning cons culture consist of processes that remove barriers that offer support systems that encourage learning and provides learners frictionless access to learning experiences of the students so next is creates coherence crafting coherence for teacher learning requires ongoing attention to how connected the learning supports for teachers are doing so involves intentional design redesign and participation on the part of leaders to weave experiences together as they unfold so that's it next is introduces teacher isolation the antidote to isolation so how will teacher how leaders reduce teachers isolation so the antidote the antidote to isolation is collaboration when teachers engage in dialogue they connect ideas 
teachers engage in the conversation to express their ideas, share their problems and solutions. They will seek feedback from their students and then it will reduce the feeling of being isolated. Next is increases teacher collaboration. So what I have mentioned earlier that is to reduce the feeling of isolation is collaboration to have collaboration with your students teacher students collaboration so teacher collaboration in education involves teacher working together to lead to instruct and to mentor the students with a goal of improving the students learning to increase the learning of the students in the classroom in the lesson and all the aspect that the teachers would teach them next we have creates a shared focus on student learning goals so goals that will help students and teachers hone their focus and create fairer assessments than unwritten or undefined expectations do. Last we have is provides structures to support collaborative inquiry. So collaborative inquiry, it provides the structure for teachers and learners to collaboratively generate knowledge while investigating problems of through hands-on or practice so for example the um, teachers give research for the students so it gives students a hands-on for the topic what they will the problem and they will solve the problem on their own through researching they will seek information in the internet and that will have to provide the structure for the students learning through inquiry so I hope that instructional leadership is clear to you now so let's move on to the next one the school-based management okay so school-based management or the SBM it is a strategy to improve education by transferring significant decision-making authority from the central office to individual schools. SBM provides principals, teachers, students, and parents greater control over the education process by giving them responsibility for, for decisions about the budget, personnel, and the curriculum. Through the involvement of teachers, parents, and the community, the stakeholders in this key decisions, SBM, can create more effective learning environments for teachers. So, in short, the school-based management, or SBM, is a deep thrust that decentralizes the decision-making from the central office and field offices to individual schools to enable them to better respond to their specific education needs. One way to empower the schools is through the SBM grant. So, the school-based management portal has four different components. So, what are these components? So, first we have is leadership and governance. It is a network of leadership that provides the vision and direction to the education system, making it relevant and responsive to the context of diverse communities. So, leadership and governance provides a development plan developed collaboratively by the stakeholders of the school and community. The school is organized by a clear structure and work arrangements that promote shared le leadership and govern governance and that defines the rules and responsibilities of the stakeholders. So next component is curriculum and instruction. So the learning system collaboratively developed and continuously improved, anchored on the 
community and learners contacts and aspiration so curriculum refers to information taught to students while instruction refers to the teaching methods used to convey that information so instructional coordinators develop a curriculum by looking at the both ways a student's learning involves evolves rather and the ways learning can be measured for example their performance tasks their assessments quizzes so that's how the instruction will be related to the curriculum next we have accountability and continuous improvement so a clear transparent inclusive and responsive accountability system is in place collaboratively developed by community stakeholders which monitors expected and actual performances continually addresses the gaps and ensures a venue for feedback and redress so this accountability requires public institutions to make financial statements to describe the organization's financial performance to outsiders the purpose of education accountability is to create public trust in the school high public confidence in schools can encourage higher participation in school management so last we have is management of resources so resources are coll collectively and judiciously mobilized and managed with transparency effectiveness and efficiency by far the most important resource that a school leader will manage is human resources you have to access a group of people for example teachers students other staff the parents and also the community members because they will all contribute skills and knowledge to supporting learning in schools so now we should know what is the importance of this school-based management so through SBM or the school-based management schools are empowered to manage and appropriately respond to learning needs and issues in their respective communities the school-based management system addresses improvements in the learning outcomes through effective schools that means that school management systems improve the flow of information in schools where thousands of sensitive and in important data should be securely stored so through proper database management students can easily update and access their records online it's one of the improvements of the school based management or the sbm system so sbm provides principals teachers students and parents greater control over the education process by giving them responsibility or decisions about the budget personnel and the curriculum primarily the objectives of the sbm are first is to empower the school heads to lead their teachers and students through reforms which lead to higher learning outcome second is to bring resources including funds down to the control of schools to spark change in line with decentralization third is to strengthen partnership with communities to invest time money and effort in making the school a better place to learn and lastly integrate school management and instructional reformation for school effectiveness so that's all my part i hope that you learned something from my report that's all thank you Good day everyone, my name is Inajan Pellegrino, B.S. Ed. Social Studies 3. So now, my assigned topic is all about the School Improvement Plan and Brigada Escuela. So first, 
let's talk about the school improvement plan what is SIP the SIP is the roadmaps that lays down the school's specific solution to corresponding identify the priority improvement areas covering in a period of three years the year-by-year -year plan for the priority improvement areas is the annual implementation plan it contains specific activities outputs required resources schedules and individuals who will be accountable for the said PIA it aims to improve the 3k result areas in basic education access quality and governance it is evidence-based result-based and is child or learner centered the SIP is the basis for the school's annual implementation plan and other specific plans such as child protection plan disaster redu risk reduction management plan learning action cell action plan in addition the SIP must contribute to attainment of the goals of the Division Education Development Plan or the DEPDP. In turn, the synthesis of the SIPs within a school district aids the DepEd representative in advocating the needs of schools and learning to the local school board and other planning venues at the municipal or city level. So in school improvement plan, there are four guiding principles. So first, the SIP shall be anchored on the DepEd vision, mission, core values, strategies, and on central, regional, division, and school goals. Second, the SIP shall be evidence and result-based, child and learner-centered. Third, the development of SIP requires innovative and system thinking and a mindset of continuous imp improvement. And last, fourth, formation and implementation of the SIP shall involve the active participation of all education stakeholders in the school and community such as um, school heads, teachers, parents, community leaders and learners themselves among others so now let's proceed to brigada escuela so when we heard brigada escuela first come in our mind is that brigada escuela is form of bayanihan so the word bayanihan is one of the core essence of the filipino culture which were the concept of the Brigada Escuela has rooted. Bayanihan o communal unity or concerted solidarity is the Filipino spirit of helping one another as a community in achieving a certain task without expecting or asking for any anything in return. So Brigada Escuela had its roots in Republic Act 8 525 which was enacted during the time of President Ramos. The adapt of a school program aimed to encourage volunteerism and a public-private partnership in public education. RA 8525 provided tax incentive for private interventions in schools. So Brigada Escuela or School Brigade, also known as the Nation National Schools Maintenance Week, is a nationwide voluntary effort that was first established in 2003. So a program of DepEd or Department of Education which aims to address resources gaps faced by the department through strengthening partnerships with the local communities. The program mobilizes and brings together thousands of parents, alumni, civic groups, local businesses, non-government organizations, teachers, students, and individuals who volunteered their time and skills to do classroom repairs, maintenance work, and clean up of 
public elementary and secondary schools. Given the positive result of the program in 2008, it has become a permanent activity in the school calendar where all schools nationwide are mandated to implement the program weeks before the school opening. The importance of Brigada Escuela In the past, the Deaf Ed struggled in what seems like the lack of priority in education in the country, as reflected in the deficiency of resources for public schools and a shortage, shortage of classroom overcrowded classes and school being not ready for the upcoming school year. In the school opening, pupils and teachers have to put up with unclean classroom blackboards that are very too rough to write on, chairs with broken armrests and other stuff that needs repairs, maintenance, and cleaning. This affects the first day of classes as the teachers and pupils are obligated to do all the tasks instead of focusing on the first day of their lesson in class. So, to elevate these issues, DepEd started a campaign through the ADAPT a School Program or the ESP in 1998, which allows a partnership with other stakeholders who are willing to share resources to improve the country's public schools education. In a few years, the spirit of voluntarism reached an unexpected peak which led the program to the communities through Brigada Escuela. The practice of this program is essential to the school heads teachers and learners or the school community as it saves and provides resources on the part of the school. The unrelenting support and effort of various stakeholders resulted in an improved school's facilities and preparation of four-day opening classes and towards a better learning environment. So for more, teachers can now start their classroom instructions on the first day of classes and pupils can now focus on their lessons without any distractions or prioritizing the cleaning of their classroom prior to school opening. Every year, more and more people extend helps to schools. Companies give cash or donation in kind of offer to send their employees to do hours of voluntary work in the schools. Members of different groups like the Philippine Army, local government units, private partners, teachers, and community members, which is the parents and pupils, are the army of volunteers contributing to provide a healthy learning environment to Filipino youth. Through this initiative, the importance of the community is recognized in making schools the best for learners to acquire the values and competencies needed to contribute to nation building. Clean classrooms will maintain the learning tools and attractive landscape inspired students to attend schools, right? Study hard and preserve to achieve their goals. During the implementation of the program, public schools are transformed into a venue which people had a rare opportunity to collaborate and be directly involved in an endeavor with the government in achieving one goal. As the DepEd explains, one of Brigada Escuela's goals is to foster understanding among all sectors of society that the education of the Filipino people is the responsibility of everyone. The government which provides a free education for the Filipino youth, the community where they grow, and the private sector who will eventually employ 
them are all stakeholders of education. Their cooperation is significant to the success of every student in education. So, a good and a healthy learning environment is ended a safe school with supplies, furniture, equipment, and, of course, a good teacher.